the shame that was confusing to me was the, sh was the shame of being told that uh, I, I, I didn't have access to termination in my town and then the shame of being told that I needed to keep it secret. And then the hardship of having to, you know, jump through hoops of fire to get to Charleston to have that termination of pregnancy. It wasn't until after I had my son that I understood that that shame had bound me in this way to make me feel that the thing that I wanted to do, which was completely in my legal right, was wrong. And that the desire that I had to terminate the pregnancy was wrong, even though it was a mother's desire to protect the daughters that I had. But it, but it lived inside of me. And, it, and it, I, I don't know that it, I don't know that it does anymore, <laughs> but it's, it's a hard thing to evict, you know, and it, it carried that shame carried itself out through the birth of my son as well. Um, but it wasn't something I was able to articulate until after he was born. And it's something that I was also, because I knew so, I knew so few women who had gone through this experience who I could discuss that with, because it, it seemed totally illogical to them when I tried, you know, but you could have done this, but you could have done this, but you could have done this. That's what they said. But when you're held in place, you're not doing anything. <laughs> and that's exactly what these laws are intended to do to women. It's called, it, if, the, it, you know, shame freezes them from being able to make the decision to terminate their pregnancy, whether it's the right thing for their families or not.